Hi, this is Pete Duffy, Legislative Director at Naugus, speaking to you from our beautiful National Guard Memorial here in D.C. I'd like to take this opportunity to update you on some recent legislative alerts we've sent out to you as members, and I compliment you with the way you've responded. Please continue to respond enthusiastically to all the pledge alerts that we send. The most recent ledge alert was on vet status, asking your support for S-629, writing your senators to have them back this bill, which would bestow the status of veterans on those who serve 20 years in the National Guard or Reserve to earn retirement, but lack the requisite Title X time other than for training purposes. This bill was heard, among other pending legislative items, by the uh, Senate Committee on Veterans Affairs yesterday. We don't know what they'll do, but this faces a tough road. A lot of members of Congress are opposed to this. They don't think that people who simply serve in the Guard and Reserve on a career basis deserve that title of veteran. If you do, please respond to this alert enthusiastically so we can push this over the edge and get this passed into law. Another ledge alert we sent out recently dealt with S. 240. This would expand to two fiscal years, the period that our members can serve an aggregate of 90 days in support of a contingency operation or a national emergency in order to reduce their 60-year eligibility age to collect retirement pay. You all know about that. The law was changed in January 2008, and it only covered service after January 2008. I received several emails in response to this alert saying, why do you begin in January 2008? Some of the toughest years of fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan, Afghanistan took place between 9-11 and January 2008. That should be covered. So those who served in that period could use that time to reduce their retirement age. We agree with you completely. However, Either one of these pieces of legislation, were they to be granted, would create an entitlement. Anything that authorizes retirement pay is an entitlement, and Congress has a law that forbids them from passing any new entitlement legislation unless there is an offset to cover that retirement. S-240, which would give us the two fiscal years, has a cost over $300 million. If we were to make these changes retroactive to 9-11, that would be over a billion dollars. Those offsets are hard to find. However, there is hope. If our retirement laws are changed for the active duty, and let's say they are given age 45 or 50 to retire, that would create a good offset to cover any changes we seek with our National Guard and Reserve retirement. So let's keep after this. The other ledge alert area we've covered pretty extensively relates to furloughs. As you may know, the furloughs have been reduced from 22 to 11 before that have to be exercised before the end of the fiscal year. Uh, Secretary Hagel exempted 75 Army National Guard dual status techs and 1,123 Air National Guard dual status techs, those who are involved in alert, alerts, personnel recovery, and firefighting. That's not enough. We need to exempt every mil tech. Our mil techs are the only military people in uniform who are not exempted from the furloughs. 75 Army National Guard dual status techs would only cover one state at best, maybe not even that. If our natural disasters hit in the form of hurricanes, tornadoes, fires, floods, we need all of our mil techs exempt so they can go to the aid of our state disasters. Please keep after this and also let your local media know that our mil techs are the only people wearing the uniform in the military who are not exempt from the furloughs. That has to change. That's a quick update. We'll be back to you again as we proceed with the ledge alerts. Please respond to them as you have been enthusiastically. Congress does listen to you. Thank you very much.